well, you did not really think that I was going to use Houdini while tripping on mushrooms, right? But we're going to use a 3D model of a mushroom to build today's setup, and maybe a few other setups in the course of the following weeks. And first, of course, we need a mushroom. And what I decided on are those standard brownish kind of mushrooms here. So we need to get them into the computer. And the way you do this is you digitize them. Well, that clearly didn't work. And also in the process of digitization, the mushroom fell apart. So let's try again. Okay, another mushroom, another try. And again, you see that didn't work. And also the mushroom broke again. So we're clearly doing something wrong here. Let's try one more time. Sometimes 3D scanning just takes an awful lot of trials. So again, let's try this one. And yeah, that seemed to somehow have worked. Another way of finding out if your 3D scan has worked, if you're not sure, is that when you're digitizing a mushroom, it should decompose into three cherries, sometimes two. However, as we're using organic mushrooms here, they tend to decompose into three cherries. So that's a nice hack. If it's wintertime, for example, you can't get cherries. Just digitize a few mushrooms and you can bake a cherry pie. Strong dad joke vibes going on today. And while I clean my monitor here, let's just download a 3D scan of a mushroom. In our example, I used a specimen from Mano's upcoming exterior project. And after we downloaded that file, that asset, let's use a file node in Houdini, dive in there and point this file node to the FBX that we just downloaded. So that's the folder we downloaded, two FBX, one with a raw scan, one with a subdivided bit lower res version and a bunch of texture maps. Let's use this lower res version here. As you can see, that's quite big. So let's attach a transform to scale that down to say 0.06% of its uniform original scale. Also, let's hit move centroid to origin like that. What you can see here is that the mesh is somewhat isotropic. It means the size of these individual triangles making up the mesh are decently uniform. So instead of remeshing this whole thing, which can take quite a while, instead I decided on using the poly reduce node, which I set to reduce the poly count to 3% of its original count, resulting in this here, a really coarse resolution mushroom. Because what I want to show you today is a rather important and often used technique in simulation, especially when it comes to soft bodies, and that is using a low resolution mesh to run your simulation on and then using that low resolution mesh to deform your original high resolution rendering geometry. So already what I did here is create this low resolution version of my initial mesh. However, as I can see here, this mushroom sits a bit weirdly in the scene. So let's move it up a bit to minus 8.35. Next, let's create a group. And in here, I want to group points, call our group pin group. And those will be the points where I'll attach the mushrooms to my axle. Let's uncheck base group and use the bounding regions to select our desired points, maybe like this. So we have those few points down here that will be in the pin group. Next, I want to copy and transform those mushrooms using a copy and transform node. And I'll just wire in my pin group in here, highlight this, and I want to rotate this around my Z axis. So if I come around here, it looks like this. And I want to create a total number of six copies like this. Next, let's set up our simulation using a vellum configure strut soft body here, which is going to drop down those two nodes. One is a cloth taking care of configuring the dynamics of my surface of those mushrooms and the vellum struts, which connect opposing points in our mesh, connecting them with a spring constraint and thus making sure those points will be kept apart, giving the impression of my geometry having some internal force that keeps it from colliding. Basically, a very cheap means of simulating internal pressure. So in my vellum cloth here, let's just drag this down and configure my constraints here a bit. So I want to pin a few points. Those were the attachment points for our mushrooms. We're just going to select the pin group here, and I'm just going to check match animation so that later we can animate those pin points down here. Let's scroll down here. And what I want to change is my bend stiffness. I want to dial this up a good bit. So what I could do is a try increasing the slider here or rather selecting a bigger exponent, for example, 10 to the power of seven. As always, I got these values from experimenting quite a bit and running a few test simulations. And this resulted in decent behavior to me. My vellum struts down here want to allow a uh, bit more constraints per point. So currently each point has only one spring attached to it, keeping opposing points apart. So let's allow three constraints per point and allow a directional jitter so that vellum is not trying to find perfectly opposing points, but allows for a bit of variation in here. And in my previous test, a value of 0.4 seemed to do nicely. Also, I had to increase my stretch stiffness quite a bit to one times a thousand. And that should be it for configuring the constraints. Let's wire those into a vellum solver and dial in a few simulation parameters in here. So in my tests, four sub steps with 16 constraint iterations. There's a nice compromise between stability and speed. And in the forces tab, I dialed back gravity to minus three instead of those minus 9.8. Let's save this and hit play. And you can see the simulation speed is really decent. And those soft body mushrooms, they just kind of bend down. However, they do not animate, so they do not turn. So let's stop the simulation, reset this and take care of that animation. So in here in the cloth constraint, we configured this pin group up here. And 
it should take over any animation that we have in here. However, currently we do not have any animation. So let's fix that by after the copy node, inserting a transform node, which we're going to restrict to the pin group. And then we're going to animate the Z rotation just by writing in an expression $FF means that in here, just my current frame number is being used as this rotation. So when I just highlight the transform node here, that should look really odd as we're only deforming those pin points down here. However, if we highlight the Vellum solver and rerun that simulation, you can now see that this rotation has been taken into account as well. Let's reset this and add a collider for some additional weirdness. In my case, I just used a simple tube. Set this to be a polygonal tube here. Let's just ghost it so we can see it. Set its orientation to Z axis. It's radius scale to 0 0.11. Moved it over to 0 0.8 along the X axis and increased the columns count to 16 polygons. That goes into the last slot on the vellum cloth. Colliders go in there and you can see if our vellum solver is highlighted here, this comes through as our collision geometry. So let's save and re-simulate this. And you can see that too is working nicely. So let's reset this and take care of finally transforming the simulation back onto our original high res geometry here. And for that, I'll have to create a matching geometry to what I use as my simulation input, which are these six mushrooms. So let's just take this copy up here, copy and paste it, get rid of this connection and wire in our high res geometry in here. Let's highlight this. And you can see we now have those six mushrooms at exactly the same position as our low res simulation geometry. So now we can set up the transformation of my simulated low res mesh onto my high res rendering geometry here. And I'm going to use the trusty old point deform for that. It has three inputs. One is called the mesh to deform. That's my high resolution mesh. Then my rest point lattice. This is my original undeformed simulation geometry. That's this one here. And finally, the deformed point lattice. Those are the points that are the result of my simulation coming out through my vellum solver here. Again, let's save this, highlight our point deform and hit play. And that too is working nicely. What I could do is go into the point deform here and tweak its capture values a bit. So for example, if I think this bend is a bit too strong, what I could do is increase the capture radius, which kind of smooths out those behaviors. So the takeaway from this tutorial, apart from the fact that trying to 3D scan mushrooms by just throwing them at your display is kind of inefficient, is that you can create and use a low res geometry, such as we did using the poly reduce here in your simulations to speed those up, even if we're running these simulations at a few sub steps, like here in this case, and then use the point deform to transfer that simulated deformation of your low res geometry onto your high res geometry, which you're then going to be able to use for final rendering. So that's part one of Houdini on Mushrooms. For next week's tutorial, we got two options. Either I could talk a bit about how to shade those mushrooms here, or I could talk a bit more in depth about how point deform works and maybe using a bit of Vex to shed some light on the simple but powerful principle of point deform. So please let me know in the comments what you'd prefer, shading those mushrooms or point deform in depth. As always, if you guys want to know more, get access to in-depth courses or just like what we do, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. And to everyone who's already supporting us, a huge thank you with a very special thank you going out to Gearbox Studio Quebec, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys. So until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.